Hi, I'm Ishta and this is my um, history of film and um, history of digital film presentation for media platforms and practices at Swinburne University. Sorry if the um, camera is giving off a warm tinge, I'm going to try to colour correct that. My room has a warm light to it. Okay, hopefully that's better. <laughs> Um, so today I'm going to talk about a technology that has revolutionized the world and that is film. So how did a technology that was essentially moving images taken in close proximity to each other uh, added with sound become what we know today and th something that we take for granted every day? Whether it be if we go to the cinema to watch a movie or when we take a device out of our pockets and start shooting anything that we want. Before we delve into the world of cinema and film we should talk about film itself. In the 1800s, Edward Muybridge was the first, I guess he was the pioneer of it all. But to make matters a bit more simple, he, um, a racehorse owner wanted his horse to be, I guess, filmed, if that was a thing back then. So what he did was he aligned 12 cameras right next to each other. And whilst the horse moved in its galloping motion, he set each camera to expose at each point of, I guess, movement to make a short to make a short stop motion-esque film. Which if you'd like to call it that, it was kind of creating the first film clip. Soon many filmmakers arrived and there wasn't really, I guess, a, a place for that. People went to see plays, they went, that's how they got, that, they got their entertainment. If a play came to the city, they would go to see it. And it was a, a thing that only rich people could do. And then once film came around, so the Lumiere brothers, George Melier, um, they then, they were mainly French people, and they kind of began making films and making short films that, that is using their own special effects. So A Trip to the Moon, Le Voyage de la Lune, was a, is a massive um, influence on French cinema and cinema in general. Um, because they created their own effects and they then would take the massive roll of film or the massive, mass, they'd take that massive reel and take it to cafes and they'd play it that way. And then you wouldn't have to buy a ticket to go to the theatre. The first feature film was actually created in Melbourne. It was Ned Kelly and it went for about two hours, um, which was um, a new thing, which had never been done before actually, which is kind of cool. Made, that was made in Melbourne. Um, most of the footage has been lost since, but there are clips on the internet if you'd like to go see it. So, film is made on celluloid, either on nitrocellulose or celluloid acetate, um, and there's all these different chemicals that's inside the film strip, and it's like taking a photo. Each film strip is uh, evenly spaced out by these little ridges called perforations. Make sure that once one part is exposed, it goes on to the next one until there's like another stop motion type. Uh, image, um, image uh, stop motion images, and that then creates a moving image. Some film strips have a little magnetic strip on the top, which is for sound, or there's an optical waveform. Soon color was invented, um, therefore the chemicals inside the film had to accommodate for color. So the three primary colors within film are RGB, colors which are red, green, and blue, which then blend together when exposed to light to create to create the image. Then the digital era was created. So in film, they use film stock. Um, but with digital film, they use the digital sensors inside the camera. Slowly people started using digital cameras, digital SLRs. It just was an easier way to take a photo instead of having to go out and get it developed or developing it themselves. In 1999, George Lucas actually used um, digital film to for Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And I guess the, the, in the last Paramount film, was done on 35 millimeter film um, and that was Anchorman 2 but that was set in the 80s. Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street in 2013 was um, filmed entirely and distributed entirely digitally. So what constitutes a digital image or a digital uh, video? Well, well then we have to talk about resolution and resolution means how many pixels are in a display. So, so what is a pixel? A pixel is a square of color. And on each screen that you look at is made of pixels. The more pixels allowed on a screen, the clearer the image will be. So 4K means there's around 4,000 around 4, pixels in a display. It, the colors are accommodated by RGB. Uh, if you go on any YouTube video and you want to change the quality because your internet can't accommodate for it or your screen is a 4K monitor and you want to change it to 4K, 
um, you'll see there's 480p, 720p HD, 1080p HD, and then it goes up to 4K, and some and sometimes it goes up to 1 1,444, then 4K, then 8K if you're lucky. Um, 4K has been the recent, I guess, trend, and there's 4K monitors, there's 4K cameras. Um, I'm just looking it up so to make sure I get it right. Um, 4K is roughly 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels, which means it's four times the size of 1080p. That's a lot of pixels, so the graphics might be even better than if you went outside. Uh, cameras that accommodate for it, um, a lot of um, digital SLRs and even point-and-shoot cameras are starting to implement 4K. Uh, it might not be as good quality as, let's say, a RED camera, which is, I guess, the flagship for... Um, if you want a 4K monitor, uh, if you want to, if you want to film in 4K, they are very expensive and they are very heavy duty, but they have some of the most sharpest image quality that I've ever seen. Slowly, 8K is rolling out. Soon, it will be the norm. So, what's so important about making movies? So, as I said before, people used to see plays and they used to go out to be entertained, but now we can be entertained any way that we'd want. We can go on YouTube and watch a YouTube video. We can watch a movie on Netflix or a TV show on Netflix. It's a way to pass time. It's a way to have a common interest. And it's become it's become a personality trait. What you like to see. What genre of film you like to watch. What, um, what videos you like to see in your pastime. It's a way of entertainment and it's a way of bringing people closer together. And we talk about it very openly and very plainly. If you want to um, make small talk with someone, you ask them, have you seen this film? And you can bond over seeing a film. You can bond over cameras and you can bond over the way film is made if you're a film enthusiast. Film has even become a form of literature, like books were. And now they make adaptations. They turn books into movies and even vice versa sometimes. It's become its own culture and microculture. Film also provides a timestamp. We can see what things used to look like because there's videos from that time that we can look at them. We can see in movies what the what the culture was like in that time. And now we can make films that are set in the future or the past. And I guess on a more personal level, we record things so that we can look back on them. I know I like to film everything and I like to take photos of everything because I love that stuff. And I love looking back on memories. Um, I love living in the now as well. But there's nothing like looking back on a video from a couple years ago and seeing what type of person you were back then and what type of person you are now. And I think that's that's just where the love of film, my love of film comes from. And so that's a brief history on film and digital film, why it's a culture and why people love it. Thank you for watching and um, I'll see you in class. <laughs>